Hey, Sun Ho, next time you turn on the aircon, can you close the door properly? Sun Ho! Sun Ho! Hey, Sun Ho, wake up! Sun Ho! Are you okay? Hello? Police? There's a dead body in my flat. It's in my tenant's room. My, my address? It's... Sir, the person who made the report is Mr. Wong Shenki. He's the owner of this unit. When he came home at 8.20 p.m., discovered the victim in his tenant's bedroom and called for the police. Paramedics were here earlier and pronounced the victim dead at scene. Do we know who the victim is? According to Mr. Wong, her name is Lee Xiao Hua. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Wong. I'm Senior Investigation Officer Ray. May I ask you some questions? Okay. May we speak inside? Mr. Wong, how do you know the deceased Lee Xiao Hua? She's my tenant's friend. She's been to this flat to visit him before. What's the name of your tenant? Bo Sun Ho. Do you know what type of relationship Sun Ho had with Xiao Hua? They used to work at a cafeteria together, but then Xiao Hua left to become a nurse. But they stayed as friends. I think Sun Ho likes her. Do you have Xiao Hua's address? No. I just know that she's from China, but I think she rents a flat with her friend. Do you know where Sun Ho is right now? He called me this morning. He said he's starting a business in Malaysia and won't be renting his room anymore. He said he's going back to his hometown. Back to his hometown? So he's a Malaysian? Originally, but he's a Singapore PR now. Then do you know which part of Malaysia he came from? Malacca. Has he contacted you ever since this morning? Or have you tried contacting him since? After I called the police, I tried to call him to tell him about Xiao Hua, but he didn't pick up his phone. Can you share his contact details with us? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Kelvin, check on Bo Sun Ho. See whether he had left the country. If so, when? Mr. Wong, how do you discover the body? I came home from work. I saw that Suno's door was slightly open and the light and aircon were on. So I went in to check. And I saw someone was sleeping in the bed under the blanket. I thought maybe Sun Ho was not feeling well. But when I lifted up the blanket, it was Xiao Hua. She was not moving or breathing. Do you have a picture of Sun Ho or Xiao Hua? Yeah. Got. We were celebrating Sun Ho's birthday. Can you send this picture to me? Do contact me if you have any further information. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Jana, check out on Li Xiaohua. If she's from China and she's working here as a nurse, she must have a work permit. Yes, sir. Sir, Dr. Chan is here. Dr. Chan. Ray, shall we? From the rigor mortis, I estimate that her time of death is 24 to 36 hours ago. However, I have to do a full autopsy to be sure. How about the cause of death? The face is very congested, with pinpoint areas of bleeding under the skin all over. There are also marks on the neck, suggesting some sort of force to the neck. So, strangulation? It could be, but I can't say definitively. Okay. Let me know when the autopsy report's in. Will do. You guys can process in now.
Sir, preliminary checks show that Po Soon Ho left the country earlier today at 1.30pm via Woodlands checkpoint. The pathologists estimate the time of death to be around 24 to 36 hours. I want you to check on the pole cams around the block. See whether the footage can throw out any clues. On it. Sir, I tried calling Soon Ho but his phone's off. An initial check shows that Lee Xiao Hua is a nurse at Tampines Regional Hospital. This is her registered address. Go to Lee Xiao Hua's registered address. Speak to her flatmate and also her supervisor at the hospital. See whether they can tell anything that might help. Got it. I spoke to Lee Hua's supervisor at the hospital. She was a caring nurse with a good track record. Her flatmates also said that she was a good person and didn't have any problems with her. When she didn't come home on the 21st of March, the day before the body was found, her flatmate wasn't worried because she thought that Lee Hua was staying over at a friend's place. The pathologist estimated that the murder happened between 24 and 36 hours from the time the body was discovered. According to the timeline, Mr Wong said that he was at work. And after work, he stayed overnight at his mother's flat as she wasn't feeling well. I spoke with Wong's employer and mother. His story checked out. The autopsy report just came in. The cause of death was manual compression of her neck. The mark on her neck were very faint, and there's no obvious sign that a ligature was used. The pathologist also cannot rule out that he used his hands. Kevin, any updates on the pole cams? Yes. Pole cams at Sun Ho's block show Lee Xiaohua entering the lift at about 1pm on 21st of March. Later that night, Bo Soon Ho was seen exiting the lift at about 9pm. He was seen returning with a white suitcase at close to 11pm. However, yesterday, 22nd of March, when he left at 11.20am, he only had a purple suitcase with him. The white suitcase seems to be the one found in Sun Ho's bedroom. Strange, right? Why buy a new suitcase and leave it behind? Anyway, I've issued a stop this order. So we'll be informed if Sun Ho enters Singapore again. Jana, contact the Royal Malaysian Police for assistance. See if they can find out whether his family members is still living in Malacca. Maybe he went home to hide or seek help from them. Got it. Mr Wong? OK, just relax. Tell me what happened. Sun Ho called me just now, but it wasn't his usual handphone number. It's a Malaysian number I've never seen before. Hello? Wong? Sun Ho! I've been trying to call you since yesterday. Something terrible has happened to Xiaohua. I know. I killed her, Wong. I killed her. <laughs> what? But why? I was angry. She was cheating on me. So I strangled her. But I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> I know. I know. Wong. You must believe me. I didn't want to kill her. You believe me, right? Sun Ho, listen to me very carefully. You need to surrender to the police. No! No police! I'll call you back. You, you don't call me. Sun Ho? Sun Ho! What time did he call? Around noon. I called you right after that. Mr Wong, I need your assistance. I need you to message Sun Ho now and ask him to contact you immediately. Then what do I tell him? Don't worry, I'll guide you on what to say. The most important thing is we need to know where he is, who is he with, and what he's about to do next. And we also need him to stay in touch with you until we find him. Okay, I'm ready. Sun Ho, I'm so happy you called. I'm worried that something will happen to you. Wong, I'm scared. 
I, I just need some money to run away. Can you help me? There is no point in running. Come back and surrender. No! If I surrender to the police, I will be finished. Are you with your family? Maybe they can help you. No. They won't help me. I, I'm sorry. I have to go. If you are not with your family, where are you? In Malacca, in a hotel. Don't run, okay? I will think of something and message you. You wait for my message, okay? Okay. Bye. Thank you for assisting, Mr Wong. Any updates? Yes, the Royal Malaysian Police have located Bo Soon Ho. He's currently staying in a hotel in Malacca. They advise on him. Okay, I'll get a warrant of arrest. You guys go home, pack your bags. We leave tonight. Got it. Good morning, officers. Today we have SIO Ray from our Singapore counterparts. He'll be briefing you guys on our suspect. Our suspect is Bo Soon Ho. We believe he's responsible for the death of young women in Singapore. He's been on the run since 22nd of March. We've been surveilling our suspect since yesterday. He's currently staying in room 3 at Ming Hotel along Jalan Zrantut in Melaka. We have men covering all the escape routes. All clear? Yes, sir! Police, you are under arrest for murder. Cuff him. Ah, no! Sir. No! Inspector? Let's go. I didn't mean to do it. I loved her. I really loved her. Tell me what happened. One night, I saw her go home with another man. I was angry and jealous. She was my girlfriend. My girlfriend. I paid everything for her. I paid for the food. I paid for her shopping. How can she go out with another man? So I invited her to my house for lunch to ask her about it. Tasuzay. 
那到底是谁？我们就出去过几次，而且啊，下个礼拜还要一起出去呢。就像你的男朋友一样。应该是吧？哎，不知道，没想那么多。你还有跟其他的男人出去吗？嗯，我当时的男朋友。不过他那时候是到新加坡公干。你们有亲嘴吗？你这是什么问题啊？有亲嘴吗？有，我们亲嘴啦，而且啊，还不只是亲嘴。小花，小花，小花。And then what happened? I decided to put her body inside a suitcase and throw it away. So I went out to buy one. But by the time I come back, her body had become so stiff, I couldn't bend her arms and legs to put inside. So you left her body in your bed? I had no choice. I didn't know what to do. So the next day, I packed all my things and ran away to Malacca. What about the towel that you strangled her with? I threw it away in Malaysia. Can't remember where. The money and handphone were missing. What happened to them? I took the money and I spent it. All of it. The handphone, I also throw in Malaysia. Not sure where. Bo Soon Ho was convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. In the case you have just seen, jealousy led to the death of a young woman. Working tirelessly round the clock, investigation and forensic officers from the Criminal Investigation Department conducted extensive ground investigations to ascertain the identity of the murder suspect close cooperation with forensics experts from the Health Sciences Authority and Royal Malaysia Police were also instrumental in bringing the accused to justice. In 2021, there were 1,099 cases of internet love scams reported, involving a total of $46.9 million lost to such scammers. The largest sum cheated in a single case in 2021 amounted to $3 million. A new variant of internet love scams has recently surfaced, where victims were asked to help transfer funds on fake bank websites. The scammers would begin by befriending their victims on social media platforms. After gaining their trust, scammers would ask the victims for help in transferring funds. They would provide the victims with a fake bank website and login credentials to do the transfer. 
When the victims discover that they cannot make transfers from the account, they'll be convinced to either pay administrative charges for the fund transfer or be asked to use their own bank accounts to transfer funds instead. Victims will then realise that they have been scammed when the scammers become uncontactable or after they have been requested to do multiple transfers. Protect yourself from such scams with these four tips. Exercise caution when befriending strangers online. Never send money to people you have never met before. Do not click on suspicious URL links. Always check with the official website or alternative sources. Never share your bank account login details with anyone. Vigilance plays a critical role in scam prevention. All it takes is a few minutes to look at suspicious requests carefully and seek verification before handing over any information and money. If you need advice, please call our Anti-Scam Helpline at 1-800-722-6688 or go to www.scamalert.sg. We have come to the end of this episode of the new season of Crime Watch. I'm DSP Joshua Jasudasan. And until next time, do your part to prevent, deter and detect crime.